Well, God bless you. This year, Reverend Garrett Bovid has selected hope as our theme for the year. So I'm going to talk about being fully persuaded of our hope. Even if we walk through the valley of the shadow of death, we will not have to fear any evil because our Father and our Lord are with us. We will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. The Father has told us the end from the very beginning. When we walk by believing, we walk with our Father. Believing His Word instead of the lies that we are constantly fed by the adversary. You know, this world is not set up to promote a godly attitude, a heart for people, a love for people. It is set up in direct opposition to what our Heavenly Father wants done. When are we going to stop believing the lies? So we hold fast to our confession of the hope without wavering. Why? Because the giver of the promise can be trusted to fulfill his word. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 35. Therefore, cast not away your confidence, which has great reward. We need to be patient and believe God at his word until he sends Christ back for us. And he fulfills the Father's will because in a little while, Christ is coming. He will not be late. Acts chapter 1, verse 6. So when they had come together, they asked him, Lord, will you at this time restore the kingdom to Israel? He said to them, It is not for you to know times or seasons that the Father has fixed by his own authority. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the end of the earth. Now, did these things come to pass that Jesus spoke of? Did they receive Holy Spirit? Yes. Were they witnesses of him to the end of the earth? Yes. Why would we think anything else spoken wouldn't come to pass? Verse 9. And when he had said these things, as they, look, as they were looking on, he was lifted up, and a cloud took him out of their sight. And while they were gazing into heaven as he went, behold, two men stood by them in white robes, and said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand looking into heaven? Then Jesus, who was taken up, this Jesus who was taken up from you into heaven, will come in the same way as you saw him go into heaven. <clears throat> the angels promised his return as they saw him going up. It's still coming. The Aramaic Prashita text, which I know you keep at your bedside for a little light reading, of Hebrews 11.1 1 says, Now believing is the assurance concerning those things that are in hope, as if they had, in fact, happened. And the evidence of those things that are not seen, that's believing. Those who went before us were good witnesses because they believed God's promise of the first coming. They all died believing God's promise, but they saw it afar off and were persuaded of it, and embraced it, and confessed that they were strangers and pilgrims while they were on earth. They hoped for their true home, a heavenly one. Wherefore, God is not ashamed to be called their God. He has prepared for them a true home, and for us as well. Our hope of Christ's return to gather us together into the heavenlies is sure. It is as certain as you're hearing these words. Keep it in your heart, before your eyes, on your lips. Be fully persuaded of it. 
The man of the flesh, the outward man, will perish. But the innerward man is renewed day by day with the knowledge that Christ is coming. <clears throat> First, Corinth, First Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 13. But we do not want you to be uninformed, brothers, about those who are asleep, that you may not grieve as others who have no hope. For since we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so, through Jesus, God will bring with him those who have fallen asleep. For this we declare to you by a word of the Lord, that we who are alive, who are left until the coming of the Lord, will not precede those who have fallen asleep. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with the cry of a command, with the voice of an archangel, and with the sound of the trumpet of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we are alive, who are alive, who are left, will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so we will always be with the Lord. Therefore, encourage one another with these words, words of encouragement of the events that are going to take place when he comes back. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 17. For this light momentary affliction is preparing for us an eternal weight of glory beyond all comparison. Our light affliction, the life we are now living, which is but for a moment, will produce for us a far more exceeding and eternal way to glory. So, don't focus on the fleeting afflictions of the moment, COVID-19, the loss of a job, a diagnosis of cancer, the loss of a loved one, etc. But on the certainty of the hope that we do not see as yet, live in the certainty of that hope. It is reserved for us in heaven, and it does not fade away. Live as becoming saints, rejoicing in the hope of receiving the glory of God. God is a God of the big picture. Sure, he sees today and all the events of it, but his view is always in light of eternity. We need to see like he does. We will be glorified with Christ Jesus when we meet him in the air. The Almighty will fulfill all his will. You can be certain of it. In time, he will make all things new again, and we will be there to witness it firsthand. Believing is the title deed for that which we hope for. So rejoice in your hope. God bless.